Welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good, good evening. Depends on where you are. Uh, and glad to have you here for the, as you can see in the chat, uh, the last webinar from the webinar series. Um, uh, today, we are going to discuss the topic of lessons learned from when switching from coal to uh, uh, renewables. For those who don't know me, my name is Sonia Aristeska. I am Senior Manager of Business and Development, Eastern Europe, uh, Green Enesis. I'm located in Germany, but work on uh, developing solar projects uh, in uh, South and in East Europe. So, yeah, literally my topic. Um, today, we have a very interesting um, um, panelists for you. Hopefully, one of the participants will finally join us, but in any case, um, the program is still quite, quite good uh, and hope you can stay until the end um, and, of course, have a, let's say, vibrant discussion on the topic on switching hold uh, to renewables. Um, some technical housekeeping rules, as you probably all know by now, the webinar will be recorded, will be put online. It's in view only mode. If you have any issues, either write in the chat or on the email. Um, and, of course, always write in the chat if you have some comments, remarks, um, whatever it is that you want to bring up. Uh, and I will pick up some of the questions later to discuss uh, in the Q&A session. Um, and um, yes, as always, we have a high number of registered attendees. I can see already that uh, there are more than 70 of you, which is a very good number. Uh, and now we'll start with the usual poll because it's good to see where you're all coming from or where you're all located. So yeah, please let's see where you're all based. Yeah, we're Germany and we have Ukraine, we have Serbia. Uh, oh, you have also Ireland and Macedonia and Montenegro and Denmark is also Thailand and Turkey. Quite interesting. It's good to see such a such a very sort of different group of people joining and discussing the same issue that we're all facing. And that's how to actually go from dirty to clean energy. Uh, nice. Okay. Kosovo. Great. Okay. So then let's move to our, um, I would say, second question. Um, and we would like to hear from you about the availability of which factors is the key for switching from renewables, switching from coal to renewables in your region. So we have you have several um, options. You can choose two. So public investments, private financing, private investors coming, suitable grid infrastructure, land availability, policies and legislation, qualified personnel, or the public acceptance. Yes, I am absolutely not surprised about the first answer, which is the regulatory and administrative environment. And of course the grid. A few more seconds. Yeah. I would say for now it's enough. We will discuss, of course, a, a bit in the questions. Uh, I would say these answers as well. Uh, um, as said, not surprised about the enabling environment and regulation being one of the main factors. Uh, and of course, also the grid infrastructure and related to that, the public investments. I'm very happy to see that public investments are also um, um, quite high in this. Um, my firm belief is that we can't do the decarbonization if the state is not involved. Uh, now let's go to the uh, second question. And that's in your region specifically, so where you're located or where you come from maybe. Uh, the development of the renewables will have little influence in creating new jobs, reducing jobs, or um, create new job opportunities, or say maybe increase, let's say the last one would be mainly about increasing uh, the jobs in your region. So let's have a look. Interesting to see about uh, the 36% of you who think that 
will have little influence. This is actually an interesting result, and um, maybe I can discuss it with some of the, the panelists later on why people believe this and what would be the reasoning behind it. But yeah, of course, the majority is, uh, the opinion is that it will create new job uh, opportunities. Um, and um, which of course there's like a lot of research done done on this topic and about the switching of the jobs uh, and creating, I would say also enabling environment to have actually thriving, thriving green jobs. Okay, so uh, not to lose more time, I believe we still don't have um, our scene setter uh, Kostiantin uh, Krinitsky, uh, when he joins, um, I will give him the floor at the end of the, the webinar after our two, uh, let's say, um, uh, next presenters. Uh, so yeah, let's dive in into the big best practices and lessons learned from two core regions, which I also know quite well and have been working very, very hard in the last few years to um, create proper planning and also channel investments in their core regions um, uh, in order to do the um, uh, just transition uh, from coal to, to clean, um, um, not only energy sector, but also clean regional uh, economy. Uh, we have uh, Con Constantina Togaridou, uh, Togaridu, yeah, Togaridu from, from the Western Macedonia region in Greece. Uh, our, um, she will talk about the decarbonization path of this uh, lignite region. Um, and we'll we we'll also have Carla Sitar. Uh, she is from um, uh, the municipality of Elenia um, uh, in the Sasha region uh, of Slovenia, uh, which hosts the last uh, coal-fired power unit uh, in, in, in Slovenia. And uh, she will talk about the restructuring of the district heating system as a priority for the um, uh, municipality. So uh, without further ado, uh, we have uh, Constantina first, who is, by the way, just a short bio that she's a researcher for just transition communication and stakeholder engagement and DCN Southeast Europe hub, and is the member of the Just Transition Territorial Committee of the Western Macedonia uh, region, as well as a core member of the working group on horizontal stakeholder strategy under the Just Transition platform of the European Commission. Um, so yeah, the right person to discuss, I would say, um, uh, how do we go from coal to renewable. So yeah, the floor is yours, please. Uh, good afternoon to all, all the participants. I'm very glad and be honored to be one of the uh, panelists in this very insightful uh, webinar. So my the title of uh, my presentation is the decarbonization path in uh, West uh, Macedonia in Greece. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, but what really happens in Greece? Greece got first place renewable energy country attractiveness index after normalizing the results with JDP. Since 2003, the Bayona renewable energy country attractiveness ranks the world's top 40 markets on the attractiveness of the renewable energy investments and deployment opportunities. The rankings reflect assessments of market attractiveness and global market trends. In absolute numbers, Greeks ranks 16. As the authors note, though, the index favors larger economies, and when normalized with JTP, Greece takes first place for the first time ever as the leader amongst markets, which are performing above expectations for the economic size. It's also be noted that in October 2019, Greece was ranked 31 out of 40 in absolute not normalized rankings, yet another proof of the tremendous progress the country has achieved in the renewable energy resources sector in the last four years. Next slide, please. On this slide, you can see the progress of electricity resources in the last decade. There is a gradual increase in the use of renewable energy resources and in parallel, a gradual decrease in lignite. In the last five years, renewables together with large hydro covered 47.1% of demand, increasing their share over the last year by five percentage points. Fossil gas met 35.4% of demand, significantly lower than the previous year, while lignite remained at the same level as the previous two years. Finally, net imports covered just 6.6% uh, of the country's demand, the smallest share since 2013. Next slide, please. The comparison of fossil fuels in the renewable energy resources 
In Greece, it shows clearly that uh, 22 has, has a milestone, it has been a milestone year in Greece, as it is uh, the zero point year, uh, if I uh, if am allowed to name this uh, year as, uh, as such one. Next slide, please. In the result of this uh, of uh, this zero point in the year 2022 is that in May, the uh, green has been the half of the electric energy in Greece. This share will exceed 80% in 2030, and for these new investments are needed in networks, storage, and energy saving. Next slide, please. Here you can see in this uh, slide the daily production per fuel and interconnected balance in Greece. In, uh, in, a, in the month of June, there is a gradual decrease in the use of lignite, and the core stone of uh, this has been that on the 2nd of July, where for 87 hours there has been no lignite use in the energy mix in Greece to, crowd, to cover the energy demand. Next slide, please. So when all of this actually happened, even uh, though even though the many steps have been taken, the last decade in Greece, there has been a political commitment, a strong political commitment in September 2019. During the United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York, the Greek Prime Minister pledged it to phase out all coal-powered electricity production by 2028, making Greece a pioneer in the Balkans. This has been a stroke of has been a strong political committee towards the co-facing out of Greece. And in, on this slide, you can see on the left on the left side, you can see a photo taken three years ago from the lignite powder of Agios Dimitrios. And on the right side, you can take you can see the photo that uh, has uh, been taken a few days ago. I consider that the difference is obvious to all of us. Next slide, please. So the evolution of uh, renewable energy resources uh, in Greece has been announced in 2019 in the National Plan for Energy and Climate. There has uh, the targets uh, towards 2030 has been set. And uh, these uh, uh, target targets are the following. Reduction of carbon dioxide emissions over 42% in relation with emissions of 1990. Participation of renewable energy resources in final energy consumption at least 35% by 2030. In regard with energy efficiency, the goal set at 38% by 2030, or the same final energy consumption with 2017, and full decarbonization of the country by the year 2028. Next slide, please. But uh, let's uh, see what's going on here in our region, in the region of Western Macedonia. It, uh, our region is the only landlocked region in Greece, most intense in Europe of lignite. It covers a, a area of 9,450 uh, square kilometers. Its population is around uh, 250,000 inhabitants. We have got an, um, an unemployed rate that uh, can be considered high, almost 20%. And uh, almost 41% of the economic activity has been based on energy mining. For several decades, renewable uh, region of West Macedonia has been the energy pillar of Greek economic growth. Next uh, slide, please. But the just transition plan also of uh, Greece has been the first one that approved by the European Commission. In this plan, the strategic of, uh, objective of West Macedonia has been described. The main goal for the next day is to transform the West Macedonia into an alternative hub of clean forms of energy and to attract investments in new and dynamic sectors of national importance. Next slide, please. So the first, uh, we can say the one of the first pillar is the is the establishment of the photovoltaic photovoltaic park in Kozani, the largest single renewable energy resources project. In uh, it has uh, been constructed in 2022. Uh, it is a cluster of 18 solar photovoltaic parks located in Kozani. And it is uh, considered to be the largest single renewable energy uh, resources project today in Greece and in Europe with a total investment over 130 million euros. This the investment is valued, as I said, about 130 million with a 40% participation of, of participation of domestic materials 
equipment and labor is considered to be uh, around three, 350 direct uh, jobs and the 60% out of these direct uh, jobs comes uh, from uh, the local uh, community. Its annual electricity generation is estimated around 350 uh, kilo of that, which is sufficient to power 75,000 homes with zero emission electricity leading to a carbon dioxide emission avoidance of over 90,000 tons per year. Next slide, please. This slide depicts what happens actually in this West Macedonia and is taken from the Twitter account of Public Powered Corporation Renewables, which describes the solar project in Tolemaida and the infrastructure bit in depleted areas. Greece is making progress, it is saying, as a transition, and the Public Power Corporation Renewables is at the forefront of this transformation. Next slide, please. One of, uh, one of the major, major pillars of energy transition in West Macedonia is the hydrogen. It's a vision of creating number one hub, creating science, industry, politics, and other partners in the Greek hydrogen economy by 2025 and onwards, establishing a green hydrogen technology park and offering top quality services, promoting innovation, know-how transfer. Next slide, please. Of course, there are initiatives under evaluation as well. The Terra, Next Generation Hellenic Hydrogen Valley at West Macedonia, with an estimated budget of 9 million euro. Hydrogen for citizens with a budget of 50,000 euro. This particular one is uh, focusing on engaging citizens and raising their awareness regarding the use of hydrogen as an energy carrier in the transportation. Next slide, please. There are, there are other approved initiatives, such as the Green Skills for Hydrogen from Erasmus program, Hydrogen Market from Interregional Innovation Investment, and one other program from Horizon Europe, and uh, actually there is another program, Zen from Horizon Europe. So there are many funding uh, resources apart from the Just Transition uh, Fund in order to, to achieve uh, what we want uh, really to, uh, to show that uh, we are a region that is based in green transition. Next uh, uh, slide, please. And uh, uh, we are talking about here the energy communities. Energy communities are civil cooperatives that are active in the energy sector with a particular interest in renewable energy resources. Citizens can use this tool to produce clean energy collectively and promote energy democracy and therefore have an active role in the energy transition. Over a period of one year, from November 21 to November 22, 85 new energy communities were launched in Western Macedonia. This means a decrease of 14% increase, 72 of which were established in the regions of purely lignite areas, Kozani, Ptolemaida, and Florina. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Um, okay. The types of energy communities. So here we're talking about three types of energy communities. Energy communities under law, the one that established in the beginning of February 2023, the renewable energy communities, and the citizen energy communities. All three types of energy communities are established as civil cooperatives under law and are based on open and voluntary participation. Their primary purpose is to provide environmental, economic, and social benefit at community level to the members or areas where the community operates rather than the financial gain. Next uh, slide, please. And here we, uh, we describe the five steps to a project. Energy communities are established to meet energy needs of members or to become active in the field of renewable energy. Therefore, it is necessary to conduct a study so as to determine how the energy community projects shall be developed to find the project site and to draft a connection request to be submitted to the network operator. This process implies the collection of various documents such as contracts regarding uh, the plot or certificates or land productivity. And here we have to uh, point out that once uh, the network operator approves the conditions of the request, connection to the network is secured. At that stage, 
the energy con uh, uh, community shall immediately set up the project so that the connection can uh, proceed. Next slide, please. But uh, apart from the increase of energy commitments in Western Macedonia, we have got also to face some problems. We have got the pending intercontination renewable energy uh, sources applications coming for energy community, accounting for 90% in country level. And third one of these is in Western Macedonia in terms of power capacity. This proves that uh, there is a lack of infra infra infrastructures regarding the grid, and it will be a huge obstacle to further development of energy communities. And also regarding of energy communities uh, financing, the main obstacle is the public funding should follow the public financing rules and the specialization of eligible projects is still pending. In the, in the lignite region of Western Macedonia as well, uh, the request in increase for virtual net metal projects over the period from 2021 November to 22 November is much higher than the recorded for projects in low and medium voltage. And energy communities in lignite areas are developing faster as a business activity and slower, but a steadily growing rate as a tool for meeting own energy needs. Next slide, please. So taking all the above into consideration, we here in West Macedonia, we claim that with steady and gradual steps, we'll achieve the coal phasing out till 2028, paving the way to the coal phasing out and then to the green transition, not only in Western Macedonia, but in the whole Greece as well. And next slide, please, is thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you so much, Constantina. That was uh, in a very short time, I would say, the, the hard work that has been done in the past few years uh, uh, in, the, in the West Macedonia region, which has really been impressive. So really congratulations to, to you and everybody who has been involved, involved in this. And uh, hopefully as soon as possible, we can see uh, the region being completely decarbonized. Um, we will come back to the questions later. I said that there are already several of them there, but now we will go to uh, Slovenia and to um, uh, uh, Carla. Just give me one second so I can uh, introduce properly the presentation that you are going to give. There it is. So yeah, as said, uh, Carla will talk about Velenia, the city of, of tomorrow. She is, by the way, the head of the Economic Development and Transition Office in the municipality of Velenia and under her leadership, the office carries out priority tasks in the field of economic development and transition from co-region co to smart uh, uh, region, as well as task on development and uh, European projects. And before she was the director of the Sasha Business uh, Incubator for six years. So yeah, Carla, the floor is yours. Let's hear about Belenia. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for the opportunity that uh, we can present also experience uh, from local level. Uh, greetings from Velenje, uh, prijatno, prijaten pozdrav svima iz prijateljskog grada Velenje. Okay, next, please. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, as you know, Velenje was uh, born uh, from the coal. We are coal city, uh, sixth largest city in Slovenia, and we have the last uh, ex uh, working, still working uh, coal mine in Slovenia, and we produce one third of electricity for Slovenia from domestic uh, lignite. Next, please. In the past, uh, we were very polluted. This picture is uh, from 35 years ago. Our lakes were very polluted uh, because the ash from thermal power plant was put uh, into the water. So 30 years ago, first ecological demonstration started because people say no more uh, pollu pollution. And uh, we prepared in, uh, this time a really good uh, ecological plan. Next slide, please. So th this lake look, look like this uh, today. So we are proud that uh, we won fifth time in a row uh, the title that we are the best natural beach uh, in Slovenia. Next, please. We put a lot of energy uh, to, to become and to be more sustainable and more greener city. And uh, we are proud that we are chosen among uh, 100 uh, climate and neutral cities by 2030. And also we receive a European Green Leaf Award. 
so uh, for the next uh, year, we will be a green capital of Europe among smaller uh, cities. Next slide. So uh, our uh, government decided that uh, the coal phase out should be uh, 2033, the latest. So we have less than 10 years uh, to become more green, smart, in innovative, modern city for our people and also uh, for, the, for the future. Next slide. We started with the process uh, in 2020 by preparing national strategy or, of coal phase out. Um, and uh, back then also our mayor decided that we need systematic approach uh, to the transition. And he established a brand new uh, office for economic development and transition. And uh, we were trying to learn from, from other coal, uh, coal regions from Europe. So we are quite active on just transition platform. And we had several exchange programs um, in Europe and also among uh, Western Balkan regions. We cooperate with Pleola Montenegro. We are also very active uh, uh, on different uh, assistance uh, to get uh, technical assistance like Target, uh, Jaspers, uh, Elena. So we work a lot with EIB as well. And a couple of years ago, we started with the international conference, Welcome Future. Uh, last year, it was about decarbonization of district heating systems in Europe. Uh, this year will be about uh, how to diversify economy in the coal mine regions uh, in Europe. So very welcome in Valenia. The conference will held on 21st of September in uh, Valenia. Next slide, please. This is just a short uh, overview how we will invest uh, GT GTF found. Uh, the most of uh, the, the uh, fund will go to, for the energy uh, transition and, of course, to boost our economy. Next, please. We have several challenges and we believe the bigger is challenge, the bigger is also opportunity. We have to find in next 10 years new image of the region of the city. We have to build uh, five, four, 400 uh, new apartments till 2027 20, for, for young families to stay and of course to work here. And uh, of course we are still uh, waiting for our highway. I, I'm sure that we will get it till 2028. 20, and uh, we need also law for closer our coal mine, a law for, uh, for a transition of our region. Next, please. One of the biggest uh, challenges, uh, uh, challenge is also how to replace uh, 5,000 uh, jobs, which will be lost by 2033 because of uh, closing coal mine. And uh, we are quite in difficult situation because uh, two thirds of all jobs are related to two big companies. One is Gorenia Hisense, and the second one is, uh, is coal mine uh, company. So we are dealing a lot to attract uh, new investors in our business zones. And also we had quite uh, success because two companies uh, from pharmacy industry will, will start to build uh, production facilities uh, this summer. And also one company will, will establish R&D center here in our business zone for heating pumps. Next, please. The biggest uh, challenge is how to transform our district heating system which is based on coal right now. Uh, it's the second largest system in Slovenia and we have uh, quite big losses on the system, 27%. So the whole uh, project is divided in three phases. Uh, first phase is that we have to isolate and uh, restore all the pipes, uh, pipelines, and of course also to renovate uh, our heating stations and to reduce uh, the, the regime, uh, because right now we have in the system high temperature regime, more than 100 uh, degrees Celsius, and we have to lower it down because otherwise we cannot plug uh, renewables into the system. Uh, next slide. And the second phase is that we have to uh, build uh, new, new uh, facilities to, uh, for production of renewables. 
which will be based on biomass. Uh, second is solar uh, thermal plant. Uh, we will also install big uh, heating pumps. And we are still exploring uh, geothermal potential and how to use uh, underground uh, mining water. Uh, at this point, I will just uh, recommend to other uh, local uh, communities to secure the land in, uh, in the spatial planning document for the, for the municipalities, because uh, right now we have really big problems how to find uh, the land, proper land for these uh, energy uh, projects, uh, because we are fighting for the same land with, with uh, other investors. And for example, only for solar uh, thermal uh, plant, we need uh, more than seven hectares uh, to, to cover uh, the summer regime. Uh, next slide, please. And the third phase of the, the district heating system is that we have to renovate all and each building in the city because otherwise the system uh, will not work. Um, we have big uh, issues and big problems with that because uh, people didn't invest in energy efficiency of, of the apartments and uh, we have only 20% of all buildings already renovated. So it's, it's a huge challenge. Uh, right now we are preparing also um, application for Elena, a technical support from EIB to help us how, how uh, to deal and to help people. Next slide. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, we already established uh, together with utility company and local energy office, uh, uh, energy agency and office, energy office for the people, because we need uh, to help them uh, to with uh, free advice, how to renovate the buildings, which technology to use, and also where they can get uh, additional funding for own projects. Next slide. Now I'll present uh, two uh, strategic projects uh, which are also related uh, to the energy uh, transition and also to create new jobs. One is that we want to revitalize an old uh, power plant into the future center. And the main goal of this future center will be to boost innovation on the field of green technologies. We are working with different faculties, also with faculty of energy and others, and also with the institutes and companies so that we can use this knowledge that we have in, in the city uh, on the energy. Next slide. And the second is that we want to build uh, brand new uh, facilities, uh, industrial and technology park in our business zone. Next slide. Uh, it will be not only for startups, but also for high tech, uh, small companies. Uh, and uh, part of this uh, project is also our National Institute uh, for Chemistry. Uh, they want to establish a new laboratory for biorefinery of biomass, which means that they will explore how can they use biomass, not only to burn it, but also uh, into paper industry, bioplastic and so on. Next, please. We cannot imagine life and work without digitalization. We have to upgrade our monitoring uh, system uh, to measure all the environmental parameters. And also we want to uh, completely digitalize uh, our uh, sustainable transport because we have free public buses, we have free uh, bike sharing systems, uh, parking spots, so we have to connect these dots together. And regarding public uh, transport, we want to decarbonize it with the hydrogen because uh, our thermo thermal power plant already produce uh, hydrogen. We just need to expand the production and to, to build a filling station. And our job is to, to buy, to buy, to buy uh, hydrogen buses and the story will be completed on, on our valley. Next slide. I strongly believe that local communities are the heart of just and green transition. So my advice and takeaway is be, be active, sometimes uh, aggressive because no government, no NGO, no ministry will solve your problems. Local communities uh, are the one, 80% of all jobs. You have to do it by yourself. That's my experience. And uh, I wish you uh, good luck uh, with that. So thank you for your attention. 
here are my contacts. I'm happy to, to work and uh, with you maybe in some European projects. Thank you, Carla. Thank you for the extensive uh, um, recap of what, everything that you've been doing uh, as well. Kudos to, to you and the entire team, the entire region, and how, how you've been working on, on trying to set up the transition on, on the, right, the right path. Um, I will jump directly to the questions then. Uh, there are several of them. Um, but I will start with the question that it actually can be answered by both of you. Uh, and that's regarding, um, and I think it's quite important, uh, especially when it comes to using European funding, and that's regarding state aid rules. Um, and are they considered to be a challenge regarding renewables projects uh, in uh, both Sasha and, and West Macedonia regions? Um, the same goes for the switch from coal. So, Constantina, maybe you can go first. Well, as, as regards the funding of renewable resources, I would say that um, we have to take into uh, consideration that the just transition plan, the one that has been approved for green is uh, 1.6 billion, and from that, 1.2 is uh, is for uh, Western Macedonia. And uh, but apart, I would like to also to stress that apart from the funding from the just transition, there is a funding from the national funds as well, and other uh, European uh, projects. And I, I would uh, just uh, recommend and suggest that should be a combination and diversity of uh, funding in renewable uh, resources. Uh, something that uh, has been um, the main focus uh, of in, in, the, in the case of uh, Greece. And um, I think that um, something that I should also point out is that apart from the public investment in renewable resources, we have got also private investments uh, in renewable resources. So we are not only uh, we are not only count uh, the public uh, funding, but also uh, the, uh, the transfer for the transfer. Uh, into uh, the green transition, a great role has been played by the private investment as the one that I show uh, shown in uh, in my presentation. So to uh, recap, I would say that uh, the funding should be come from diverse uh, resources in order in order to have got a sufficient level of uh, development of renewable resources in um, in the areas. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, my Zoom has been a bit in a, having problems. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yes. We can. Okay, Carla, maybe you can then go next. I'll try not to reboost it now because we have problems then. <laughs> Please go. In our case, uh, regarding uh, the project of uh, transformation of district heating system, uh, we as municipality are the owners uh, of uh, pipelines and for this first phase we already have uh, secured 18 million euros from GTF uh, to, to do the optimization of the system to reduce losses and so on. And this project is not under state aid. Uh, we had just meeting uh, today about this and also with uh, our Ministry of Finance. Um, and uh, because it's, it's also public and so on. Um, but I know that uh, if the investor is a private, comp uh, not private, I would say, um, for example, our thermal power plant is also investor in renewables. And they just sent two weeks ago uh, um, a special um, documentation uh, to the European Commission if their project is under state aid or not. So in our case, we are not uh, under the state aid. Okay, thank you. I will try to uh, come back to the to the webinar room, but um, there were also some questions I I uh, believe, um, uh, Carla, specifically about the um, the lake and how did you clean it up so so fast and what were, I guess, also like line of financing and uh, who was involved in this? Because I know that the other regions also are facing really difficult problems when it comes to pollution. I think the the, the main uh, mind stall was that the, the thermal power plant stopped uh, pushing the, uh, the ash uh, into the lake. 
So uh, the nature did uh, fifty percent uh, by themselves, and uh, also our coal mine company was very active uh, in restoration of of the land. And uh, uh, back then they established a special institute, Erico, just for for this purpose. Okay. Um... Unfortunately, I can't see the other questions, uh, so I would ask the colleagues from the initiative to maybe help a bit there regarding some of the questions that were asked specifically to Konstantin and to Carla regarding the projects and programs that they are having. Otherwise, I can also ask my questions. <laughs> but in, um, okay, I thank don't... You. So, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sonia. I, I maybe I will come... Yeah. Uh, Pick up it from here. Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Irina Novak is here from the Secretariat of the Initiative. And uh, I will pick up one of the questions I see in the chat about uh, which were the main policy interventions to support uh, just oh, the green transition happening uh, in Valenia. But also, uh, Constantine, if you would like to contribute to this question, please go on. Thank you. Um, as I said, we we started uh, many years ago with uh, with the ecological uh, renovation uh, uh, of our valley. But uh, regarding just transition, we start uh, with 2020 uh, by preparing national strategy of uh, coal phase out, which was um, managed by Ministry of Infrastructure. Uh, they hire um, uh, external expert, which was uh, which was uh, Deloitte, and they prepare the strategy and then uh, action plan, and then with uh, our ministry uh, for cohesion policy, uh, which is uh, which is also um, uh, uh, the, the managing authority of the GTF, we prepared a just transition territorial plan. Uh, for our region, so this uh, territorial plan is uh, is actually document uh, uh, for uh, how to get funding from from GTF. I'm not sure if I answered. Uh, I think you did, and I see that Sonia is yeah, back. In the apologies room. for that, but so I will hand over. Yeah, back to the Sonia. Zoom and uh, Microsoft Teams. Sometimes I wonder which one's worse. Anyways, thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, Irina, for stepping, stepping in and saving me. Um, uh, okay, so um, uh, towards what jobs have people employed in the coal industry transition to? Actually, this is a very good question. Yeah, it's for to both of you. So we're talking about the jobs in the energy transition, right? Yeah. Uh, this this is a hot topic, as we say, in Greece, and not only in Greece, but in all over Europe. It's the job, uh, the job reskilling and upskilling of those who are losing their work is an issue and is a challenge. I think that you probably all agree on that, not only in Greece, but uh, the whole European Union and the Western Balkan as, uh, as well. Yeah. In uh, specifically in Greece, uh, we're talking about 4,000 coal workers that m probably will lose their job when, due to the coal phasing out process. This means that, uh, in some, and not to mention, of course, that there are numerous uh, around uh, 15,000 that uh, are indirectly affected by this coal phasing out. So we have to keep in mind that um, beyond the economic uh, economic model, because we're talking about uh, here about renewable resources, and this is all uh, really about an economically productive uh, new model, but beyond the economics, there are the, the there are people and there are the social dimensions of this uh, of these transitions, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a hard issue. And uh, to be honest, uh, in Greece there have been like some some pro programs for uh, reskilling and of upskilling uh, for workers, mainly on uh, digital skills. And uh, now I know that they are working and there will be special seminars about. Uh, uh, the hydrogen, hydrogen in order in the, because a uh, special knowledge is needed uh, for the establishment and for the storage and uh, for the ben take uh, benefits of the hydrogen. 
And at this, at, this, at this point, I should point out something else. The importance of, of, the, of the stakeholders' engagements, of diverse stakeholders' engagements. And so the role of university in our region is a great one and has played a, a distinctive and very, let's say, beneficial role. And because of their a lot of uh, programs uh, are, are in progress right now, and uh, many of these programs are related to the jobs and how the, re the region will uh, gain and take benefits of uh, this uh, transition to uh, renewable energy resources. Because in the beginning, uh, to be honest, it, it, is, it was hard uh, to adjust ourselves to such a kind of transition. But um, nowadays, I think that step by step, uh, we will uh, create uh, a pool of uh, new jobs that are directed into digital, as I said, skill and green skills. And by saying green uh, skills, I have uh, to explain myself that uh, I mean skills that are related with the photovoltaic and the networking and the, the hydrogen. Thanks. Uh, Carol, maybe you can also add about the uh, coal workers in Sasha. Yeah, <clears throat> our uh, coal mine will operate till 2033. So we have opposite uh, problems. We need miners. So if you have extra <laughs> miners, please send it to the land. We can we... send the ones from the coal regions already, yeah, <laughs> closing because, the mines. Because... But there is a solidarity, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, so really, um, our coal mine is uh, searching for workers, for miners, because if you want to, to work with uh, full production, they need at least a thousand uh, miners. Uh, and uh, after the closure, they will still need 20, uh, 200 or 300 workers for, for, uh, for this uh, uh, closure works. Uh, we believe that uh, the state, uh, the, the government will take care of the miners with uh, some, some methods. Uh, and uh, so we have to create new jobs for our kids, for young people to stay uh, here, to work here. Otherwise, uh, you know, they will go away and it's hard to bring them back. You are definitely right about that one. Um, it's not only about the green jobs, but it's also about jobs about the young people actually having a, a good and fruitful life. Um, concerning that, again, I would say uh, a question to both um, uh, to both of you um, uh, would be: it's regarded. I mean, it's for Slovenia, but I would say it's the same for Greece about the what are the local strength. I would say to both region when the, the transition is facing. So we were discussing a lot about the problems, but what would you say are the local strength and advantages to have uh, decarbonized regions? Also, whoever wants to go first, it's fine. <laughs> Constantina, maybe you. Well, as I said, that uh, uh, concerning uh, the green transition that the coal phase out in uh, in Greece and Western Macedonia, I think that uh, the political commitment of the national and the local authorities has played has uh, has played a great role yeah. towards uh, this uh, this path that uh, the the just transition path and the green transition path. And um, I would say that uh, a great role also has played that uh, there has been a very uh, a very organized and very a very well organized uh, plan about uh, this uh, transition, and uh, about um, apart from that, uh, as I said, that we are very much should be very much concerned in social the social dimension of this, uh, this uh, transition, and I think at this field that uh, a lot of work should be should be done as um, as well in order uh people to get the benefits of of uh, this uh, transition and um, i would say that in the beginning that everybody has been in shock uh, has been shocked uh, when we when uh, uh, the timeline the deadline has been uh, 2028 afterwards we should be also keep in mind that the energy crisis has played a great role in the coal phasing out and the, uh, the new energy transition and uh, in Greece, uh, fortunately, didn't play such a crucial uh, role. And uh, so we are committed to our uh, planning for, decarboniz for decarbonization till 2028. 
in case that there is a delay for of one or two uh, years. So in my opinion, I think that we have uh, we have done uh, great progress and uh, the process that uh, we follow is uh, very structured and it is very well organized. And uh, I think that uh, finally we will manage uh, to have uh, the best benefits, not only for um, their environment, but for the social, uh, uh, for the society and the citizens mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Carla, and maybe you can add to that because there were some questions regarding the funding that you received uh, for the projects. Yeah, but I think the GTF funding is not uh, the strength, no. it's just a, a help uh, because we are not doing this because of the GTF. I think the, the really big advantage is that we have really dedicated team uh, at, at, the, at the municipality with our mayor and we really want to change something uh, for the future and that we look really positive on, on the situation uh, because we believe really that this is good opportunity also for us. Um, I know it's dedicated, uh, it's, it's very delicate uh, uh, question, but uh, I'm sure with the, with the right projects, we can boost really our city uh, in front. Uh, we already have a lot of knowledge on different fields, especially on energy, and also we have energy location because it's really hard uh, uh, to establish new energy locations uh, in, in Slovenia, so we have to use uh, these facilities uh, which we already have in this grid and everything uh, uh, for, for, for the best of for all. Yeah, what I hear from both of you, and I absolutely can only uh, attest that that is the truth, and then meaning that the good and proper planning, but actually having people who are going to do that, it's one of the most important things, apart, of course, from the, from the funding needed to actually implement the projects. Um, um, we have a bit more time, so I, there is a good question that I want to ask uh, that I uh, saw um, uh, Irina sent me from the chat, and that's uh, basically going forward based on what everything that you've learned, so the good and the bad, everything that happened, uh, what should be the next steps for the coal regions in the Western Balkans when it comes to the just transition and where, according to both of you, the focus should be? Uh, I will say that uh, I will try to, uh, to put that in priority, okay? First priority, apart from the funding, I will say, I will say, and I will focus on that is the political political commit, commitment. And um, I want to say that if we don't have the political commitment, even if you had the funding, there will not be there will not be any progress in uh, towards uh, energy transition. So first of uh, first of all, I will pick that up. I will put the political uh, political uh, commitment of the national authorities, of the municipalities, of the regional authorities uh, uh, towards this um, the towards uh, towards uh, the green transition they call facing now. Absolutely, I have to be honest that apart from the political com uh, commitment, uh, the funding is plays a crucial role. Because if you don't have the hand and the funding, uh, it's very difficult to make uh, the, uh, the steps uh, forward. Because you have to take into consideration the social dimension, that the social, the social dimension is related with um, how, with those, the, with, those, with those who are more the most affected and those are the cold workers. And how you will um, uh, how will you move over to a new productive model if you don't have a funding? And so I will say that it's um, a mixture of factors that play a crucial and important uh, role. And uh, what I will say about the Western Balkans that um, they should move forwards, that they should move to the green transition because uh, we are neighbor countries in the European Union. And uh, if there is such a gap between the European countries and the Western Balkans, there, then there will be a huge problem. So uh, regardless of uh, any pro obstacles or any problems that there are right now, I'm sure that they will find the way. And I'm sure that uh, also the European Com uh, Commission and the European Union should uh, contribute to the green transition in the Western Balkans uh, through uh, through the resources. 
But the Western Balkans, the country of the Western Balkans should make the first step. And this is, I repeat, the political commitment that they will, that they will move on to the green transition. Absolutely. Carla. From local perspective, um, start with uh, with uh, good planning to prepare uh, strategic documents uh, and to to establish a consortium uh, uh, with uh, with the companies, with the NGOs, with the uh, miners, uh, syndicates, uh, and all other stakeholders who can uh, help uh, uh, with with the uh, with the documents. And then um, just trying try to 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 prepare also from this vision, from these documents, action plan, and from action plan projects, and then uh, go forward. And yeah, that's my yeah. that's my advice. Thank you. Um, uh, I can only um, yeah add to that that of course um, as, as being uh, the, the neighboring countries, I know that there are a lot, there is a lot of cooperation also with the regions, and um, I only hope that that will increase and not only in exchange of know-how but also in actual productive um, uh, joint investments because um, it is at the end of the day a small region, and I believe uh, let's say a regional market uh, where we have renewables uh, where they are mostly fitted, and then uh, connections between uh, where the production is and where the needs are um, the most efficient way of being also, uh, of not only using an energy but also in the let's say in the uh, geopolitical context being independent from from foreign resources uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time. I know that there were there was there were a lot of questions, which only just proves how people are. I would say hungry for knowledge of the regions who are already going through the transition successfully with all the obstacles, but still success successfully. And that's important to to really like uh, pinpoint. Um, so I just really really hope that uh, not only both of you but also your colleagues will continue cooperating with the regions from the Western Balkans and and continue uh, helping and supporting them. Uh, I know it's not only about the knowledge and it's also about the funding. There were a lot of comments regarding um, the necess necessary funding, uh, not for the countries themselves maybe, but uh, for the regions, for the small municipalities who are um, struggling and going through the transition and who um, need um, uh, support uh, in actual productive investments. Um, with this, I would uh, just like to say one big thank you to the colleagues uh, from the initiative of the co-regions of the Western Balkans and Ukraine for the amazing work that you are doing in connecting everybody. Uh, and for the for these six webinars, I really, really enjoyed moderating the last uh, three webinars. Um, uh, so thank you to Irina, to Victoria, uh, if I forgot anybody else, sorry, but yeah, thank you to the entire team for the wonderful organization, um, for bringing us all here. Um, I know uh, and uh, that there will be an off on offline event, but in-person event in Brussels uh, is sometime in autumn. So I do really hope that I will see you. Uh, I will try to come and I, could, I really hope to see you, most of you uh, there in person so we can continue discussing this very, very important um, uh, topic. So kudos really from, from me. And I can say, I think in the name of everybody that, that uh, for the work that you're doing and I can only wish Wish you now um, a good uh, uh, summer. Uh, have a good rest. Uh, hopefully, without uh, too many issues when it comes to flooding or heat waves. Uh, and yeah, see you all soon in some uh, other setting. So thank you so much, everybody. And yeah, stay in good health, and we stay in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.